Hello everyone and welcome to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly give or take update on the miniatures for the various games we cover here that have been painted over the last little while. And once again, no Batman. We've got a new streak going for no Batman miniatures at all. It helps the night models aren't releasing any, but you know. So anyway, this week we have from left to right a bunch of Blood Bowl. We have some Blackstone Fortress. We have some Bot War. And then we have a bunch of Marvel Crisis Protocol and almost all of the the X-Men releases just got Magneto and his um, what are they called metal constructs to go and that'll be the next project but yeah we'll start from the left and go to the right hopefully getting a team ready for the new season of Blood Bowl last week or whenever it was eight days ago at this point nine days ago uh, you have seen the one Blood Bowl miniature I had to show off to you, which was kind of like my, my trial run for the Recklin Reavers, just the basic human team from the 2017 starter. Well, I have been painting more of them. So this is the one that pairs with the one I showed off last time. They're the same pose. There's six linemen in total, but only three poses, so you get two of each. So this is the other one that goes with the one I showed last week. Then I have two Blitzers, and the only thing that tells them apart from the linemen, really, because they're just all humans, is they've got very large... Um, helmet eagles? <laughs> I don't know what to call that. What, what would you call that thing on his head? I, 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 I'm not sure. Either way, that's how you tell the blitzers, the human blitzers. You just, you have those long silver things that are much larger than any of the other guys. Like the normal linemen just have basic ones and then the throwers and the catchers have none. So, Talisar Blue, Blood Angels Red, a little bit of a gloom and flesh tone. A lot of Agrax Earthshade over the top to give them that grimy rugby type look. And the clothing is just Agrax over the top of Great Seer base paint, which they were all based in as always. And just some grass flock on the base that's not in focus anymore. And some grass flock on the base. So then we have two catchers. And at this point, once the well with all these done, I think I have two throwers left and two more linemen, and then that's the human team done just in time for the new box, the, the 2020 season. Why are they calling the new Bloodborne, a uh, Bloodborne? I, I always make that same mistake. Why are they calling the new Blood Bowl season two when it's the fourth edition of the game? That's confusing, quite frankly. Either way, this team should hopefully be fully ready by the time that the new starter box comes out in a week, just under a week at this point, because they did two weeks of pre-orders rather than one week for some reason. So it'll be ready, but there will need to be an opponent team and it's either going to be the orcs from this 2016 starter box or more likely the orcs from the new box because I think they'll be quicker to paint and it'll be interesting to see an old starter box team versus a new starter box team with the, the new rule set. Although the new rule set isn't terribly different from the existing. They've cleaned it up a little bit, they've renamed a couple of things pointlessly like going for it and perfect weather for Blood Bowl, etc. But the changes to having pass as a separate stat and just taking away superfluous modifiers and just incorporating them into stats instead, great for streamlining. All for it. So anyway, Reckland Reavers, that is, well, with the seven I just showed you there, with him in front, seven I just showed you there plus the one from last week, eight of the 12 done that you get in the box. Chalking away at it. So... We have Blackstone Fortress, I'll show you the Ambo first, partly because it's my favourite miniature from Blackstone Fortress, but also because you'll hopefully have already seen him in the Lair of the Beast special that went up earlier this week. The, I love the Ambo, it's my favourite model from Blackstone Fortress by a country mile, I just like its design, I like its pose, I like its imposing figure. So for colouring it, Aethermatic Blue was used for the skin tone with uh, Agrax and some known oil mixed in as well I think, to pick out the muscle lines. The carapace was Blood Angels, uh, Blood Angels, Ultramarine, Ultramarine's contrast with Known Oil put over the top to bring the shade down. And this was Talisar Blue. So there was three blue, all three blue contrasts. Come on, there we are. All three blue contrasts used together. Ultramarine's Blue, Talisar Blue, Aethermatic Blue, copious amounts of washes, Iandin Yellow on his pulsating whatever they are. And then, for the, because it's Blackstone Fortress, I don't really do anything with the bases because they're already black. But, added some blood because this is a horrifying creature of death that will devour you. Oh, and uh, Skeletal Horde for the bone kind of pincers. Shading over the top with the non-oil. 
or uh, Agrax Wash, and then also Blood, because again, he is a horrifying monster. Very happy with how that turned out, and just in general, such a cool monster, and very intimidating. So I also finished two more of the base boxes explorers. These are stand-ins, if anyone should meet an unfortunate early end and die. So, oh, there's also a side quest we can do now that I've finished. Tadius the Purifier. He and Vorn team up on a little two-player mission. So this is otherwise known as Space Pope. Done in a lot of Nazdrag yellow for the gold, Blood Angels red for the red, and then just a wash over the base coat for the, the white parts. And that's some Aethermatic blue on the blue highlighted parts. And then some Lead Belcher silver with a wash over it. Kind of wish I'd added more detail to the Servo Skull, but went with it as is. And that is Wildwood for his holster and pouch. He's got a robot arm, which I didn't notice until, until I was painting him. But the official art is that's, that's a robot hand. So that's Space Pope. I was kind of intimidated take, taking on this miniature because he's so detailed. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with how he turned out. As per usual, it's surprising, but Citadel miniatures take very well to Citadel contrast paint. <laughs> so this is the Navigator, otherwise known as... I'm not cheating, I'm trying to remember. Esperin Lucarno, I believe is his name. Or Esperin, something like that. He's moderately psychic, he creates force barriers. He's kind of, he's interesting in how he plays. He's kind of like a tank, but he can't take hits. He, he supports other people and generates force fields, but if anyone actually gets close enough to smack him, he, he's garbage. <laughs> bad defense roll, bad vitality roll, just in general you don't want him getting touched. That's more Nazdrag yellow, more lead voucher, Shylish purple, ultramarines blue on the interior of his cape. Then I know his cape's got a fancy pattern on it, I didn't want to try and pick that out with anything. Uh, so I just I just did it all purple. I, I think he looks good from the front, kind of basic from the back. But another really decent model, and all the grooves and little detail parts they put in, just it makes contrast really shine the more detail lines a miniature has. So that, that turned out pretty well. And that also means I just have the the Crute Warrior and the Ratlings to finish from the base box of Blackstone Fortress, and then that's literally all of it painted. So next, Bot War. Robots in disguise, sort of. This is Mega Tyrant, who I've painted to look like nobody in particular, I promise. A little bit of the grey contrast for his feet, but then just lead voucher silver and a wash over basically everything else except the red, which is Blood Angel's red. Painted to look like Megatron, I'll just say it, obviously, because he's the leader of the Deceivers, so he's the villain. He's meant to have, like this hand, is meant to kind of poke out a little bit more and he's meant to be looking to the, the direction like he's shooting someone off to the side. The metal pin that sticks into him was, it was too frayed so it was kind of like an Abaddon's metal hand situation. It, it kept falling off. So unfortunately just so it had more contact points, had to make him point forward. So it's not as dynamic as it's supposed to be. Still imposing though. And I've got my Megatron facsimile. So he will be leading the Deceivers, so I had to start painting the Deceivers, and I've started with two of the people whose names I'm not going to remember, um, but they're Pseudo-Constructicons. They're two of the, the not-Constructicons, who I've done in Warp Lightning, Shilish Purple, Lead Belcher Silver, and a Known Oil Wash. So there's five of these to do in total, and then the combined form, which isn't called Devastator, but I'll call it Devastator. Because that's what I'll be painting it like. I kind of wish there was a lighter, just a, a slightly lighter green contrast. But their, their shade of green, I'm meaning the actual Constructicons, wasn't super consistent. It started off like lime green and then went pale. And I think in more modern iterations it is pretty dark. Well, if you go by the Michael Bay film, they're all different colours, which is horrible. But we don't go by those. So yeah, I managed to get a couple of these knocked out. And as always, I, I like the style of the Bot War miniatures. They are the, exactly the aesthetic I look for, or I'm looking for, but there is still a bunch of them to go. We've got three more to go, and then we can do another test battle report. So that leaves us with Must Resist Urge to do X-Men theme tune music. We've got Half Brotherhood, Half X-Men. Again, just Magneto to go. Using all the same colours I've been saying. Oh, sorry, I had to blow a little bit of fluff off of Sabretooth's base there. So for all the yellow you're going to see on Sabretooth, on Toad, on Wolverine, on Cyclops, 
I did the same thing with all of them. I did a Yand in Yellow, didn't like how it looked by itself, so I did a little wash of Agrax over it to go into the, the detail lines. And I think in Sabretooth's case particularly, it really picks out his muscle lines and as a result makes it look better. And that's also Wildwood on the brown parts and just Basilicanum Grey for the bases as well. His pose is nice, it's deliberately meant to be a posing uh, Wolverine's pose. So if we hang on, if we put him like that, and then we'll take a look at Wolverine. I'm not actually that keen on the sculpt for Wolverine, I don't think it has the detail. I'm not making excuses for my bad paint job, but I am saying I don't like the mold they went with for him. It's still it's better than the old Night Models one, but I, I, I feel like it's lacking detail, and I don't know how else to explain that. He got, he's got fluff on him as well, there we are. Got rid of it. But he is set to oppose Sabretooth, like they're facing each other down, like that. And that's awesome. It's a nice little touch, which I guess kind of makes up for Wolverine's fair... I, I don't know, there's just there's something... Um, I'll tell you specifically what it is. I feel like there's something wrong with his chest, and I don't know enough about the anatomy of, like, characters or whatever to explain it in detail why. It just doesn't look right to me, and I'm not talking about, again, my paint job. Look at the official paint job, it still doesn't look right. It looks bad compared to the normal standard of their excellent paint jobs and I don't know why but it just does. So then we have Toad. Nobody cares about Toad. He came with Magneto, that's why you have Toad. Child's purple, Yand and Yellow with the washes. Added some Nurgle rot to be slime because he's got a slimy tongue. He's fine, you know, like his rolls are fine. It's just nobody cares about Toad. He's gonna watch them. He's gonna stand over there and watch. So then we have Mystique. Uh, did try and use a little bit of apothecary white contrast, but mostly just again used a bit of known oil to pick out shadow on top of the gracier base. That is Talisar blue for her skin, which is going to be the same you're going to see on Beast in a second. And uh, Griffin orange for her hair with a little bit of wash in it as well. Nazrag yellow for the Xavier School for the Gifted logo that she's standing on. She, she was pretty quick to do. I, I don't really think it's... she's, she's nothing fancy. Pretty easy, very quick, especially with contrast. It's it's fine. I have no idea why you would ever use her leadership ability over Magneto's, but whatever. So before we go into the Beast and Storm, let's go with Cyclops, one of the leaders of the X-Men side of the X-Men releases. Really like this miniature, quite happy with how it came out. Again, Yand in Yellow with a wash over it to help pick out the detail. Talisar Blue with a Agrax wash just over parts of it to pick out the muscle line. And I think that really helps give him his, his classic comic book style look. I'm very happy that I didn't mess this one up because it would be so easy to accidentally mix the paint in too many places and have green or a green. So yeah, very happy with how that turned out. He's standing on a broken bit of a sentinel which I kind of tried to paint in its official purple and blue, but who knows if that's what it's meant to be. That's what I took it to be. So when we have Beast, I didn't model... Oh, come on. There we are. I didn't model Beast with his book and his glasses because they're meant to be in battle poses, and he, he's, he's a smart person. He would not go to battle and be like, oh, perfect time to read a book. And again, same thing I used for Mystique. It was used for him. Ultramarine's blue for his pants. Lead Belcher Silver with washes over it for the, the girder thing he's standing on. That's about it. I like him. I like I like Beast. Don't have much more to say about him. To finish on, this time, we have the Queen of Wakanda herself. We have Storm, the other leader of the X-Men from these releases. Literally just finished before I recorded this, so subject to change. Might do some touch-up work or change something. But I'm quite happy with her, except for this. See that? That's not great. And it's not even like I can just wobble her and she does it. That is because the contact points on the lightning bolt that gives her the impression of flying, that you can see kind of there, they're not pushing. They should have been pushing. They're just grooves and they're very hard to find grooves. So she wobbles and I, I can't hold her straight probably, but she's like, you can see she's kind of squint. This lightning bolt should have been thicker, there should have been a push-in to hold her more rigid like there is for Magneto, like he's he's held in place if you build him properly. But Storm, you build her properly and she still, she, she wobbles like a, 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 not a wacky waving arm flailing inflatable tube man, what am I thinking about? The bobblehead, that's what I'm thinking of. Why did I go to the more complex option first? 
So she's like that. Obviously, if she's just sitting, it's fine. It's only if you move her or deliberately ping at her like I was. But it's a little disappointing. They could easily have alleviated that by doing just a thick kind of slot in part or add another lightning bolt across here to give her another point of contact with the base. There's a, a dozen things they could have done. They were lazy and she's a bobblehead as a result. That said, I like the pose. It's cool. It's imposing. I wish her stat card, card was a five threat character, but whatever. For the lightning effect, I did Talisar Blue and then blended it while it was wet with Aethermatic Blue and then after it dried, just did a little bit of Gracier Highlight at the top, which is not in there. Gracier Highlight at the top, kind of there and there, to make it look like the lightning is in the process of striking. And then just white and a wash for her hair and her skin tone was, oh I always forget what it's called, Fire, Fire Slayer Skin Contrast, something like that. What was it called? I always forget. Ah, I can't remember. I think it's something like Pyre Slayer skin. It, it, I don't know, it's got a weird name. But anyway, that is it for two more weeks, give or take, of painting. What can you expect to see next time? Magneto, for sure, with his metal constructs. Hopefully the finished Blood Bowl team and maybe some orcs as well. Maybe some more Blacks and Forgers, hopefully some more not Constructicons. And I, I'm not sure what else. There's variables all over the place that it could be. If you want to show me something you've been painting, feel free to tag me on Twitter. I will look at it. I like seeing painted miniatures. Even if it's a miniature game I don't actually play myself. I don't mind. So feel free to send that my way at GamerIND on Twitter. Thank you very much for watching this though. And I shall see you in just about two weeks for the next one. Ta-ta for now.